Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. My name is Folon Shualakija. I'm the servant leader of the Rose of Sharon Glorious Ministry International in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm about to share my Easter message with the body of Christ and anyone who cares to partake. We might be on lockdown, but the message and power of Christ cannot be locked down. He is risen, yes, he is risen indeed. So I welcome you to another powerful anniversary of his rising. In so doing, we have been bankrolled into the blessings of abundant life, healing, joy, peace, and every good thing. We thank you, Lord, for the finished work on the cross that enables us to have dominion and authority, even as Jesus has finally disarmed principalities and powers. We thank you because Satan has no power over us anymore. Our yokes have been broken and our burdens have been made light. Father God Almighty, we thank you for our victory. Therefore, Lord, we pray that even though COVID-19 crept into our lives, we pray that the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ will bulldoze it out of our homes, our territories, nations, continents, and even the entire globe in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, let's get started. Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3.10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. In this scripture, Paul's heart's desire were fourfold. To know the Lord Jesus, to experience the power of his resurrection, to fellowship with his sufferings, to be conformed to the death of Jesus. We will then look at what the resurrection power of Christ guarantees in our lives before I then conclude. So A, the knowledge of Jesus. A lot of people today are very zealous, just like Apostle Paul in the Bible. They practice religion and equate it with the knowledge of God. They are involved in many church activities and ministry teams. In fact, they're the first to get to church and sometimes the last to leave. However, like Apostle Paul realized, all these don't mean you know the Lord. So, how do you know the Lord? One, Knowing the Lord starts at the cross. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You need to first of all surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You cannot have a relationship with someone you don't know or someone you're not familiar with. It's only when you become a member of God's family that you're able to have a relationship with him and then your journey with him starts. I usually liken it to being a member of a club. It's only club members that can make use of and enjoy the facilities in a club for their good pleasure. Two, knowing his word. The next step to knowing the Lord is to fellowship with him through his word. By cultivating a daily habit of Bible study, we will get to know who our father is and his will for our lives. Three, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ promised the Holy Spirit to those who know him. According to John 14, verse 26, Jesus said, But the Helper, 
the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The Holy Spirit will reveal mysteries and secrets about God to us and help us understand what the scriptures say about the Lord. Having an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit will also help us with a better understanding of the scriptures. B. Experiencing the power of his resurrection. Christians accept Jesus' resurrection. However, few fully comprehend the power behind it. The good news is that all Christians have access to this great resurrection power. Our task is to access it to enjoy it. In our theme scripture, Philippians 3.10, Apostle Paul was not asking God for more power. Rather, he asked God, that he might know the resurrection power that was already available. So, what does the resurrection power really mean for Christians? 1. Forgiveness of sins Anyone who is without a relationship with God is a slave to sin because sin has a hold on them. However, the same resurrection power that God used in raising Jesus Christ from the dead also has the ability to free us from the power of sin. But the resurrection power doesn't end with our forgiveness alone. We also receive the power to overcome sin. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live above sin. Through this empowerment, we are strengthened by God to break age-long habits and desires that are contrary to his will. This knowledge helps us to live holy lives. Then there is three, the power to become Jesus' witnesses. Jesus commanded his disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, saying, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. This power enables us to be effective witnesses of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then C, to fellowship with his sufferings. I want you to understand that Apostle Paul was not talking about suffering and dying for his own sins. Jesus' death was the perfect sacrifice for all our sins. When Jesus said, it is finished, it means the price for our past, our present and future sins were paid for in full. So, what does fellowshipping with the suffering of Christ then mean? One, it means we become an enemy to Satan and the world the moment we decide to follow Christ. Two, as we continue our Christian journey, we run into challenges that may be tough and painful. Three, these challenges may be in the form of persecution, being ridiculed, enduring hardship and sacrifice of our physical convenience, being denied of our rights and privileges, excommunicated from family, friends, and community, and in some cases, paying that ultimate price, even death. Therefore, what do we achieve by fellowshipping in his suffering? One, we develop a level of intimacy with Christ as we trust and grow in him. Two, our character is developed and transformed. Three, we find comfort in God's presence despite the turmoil 
that may surround us. We are empowered to do what we can to advance the cause of Christ. D. To be conformed to the death of Jesus. The greatest accomplishment of the resurrection power is conforming us to the likeness of Christ. Our purpose will be to become like Christ in our daily living. The pleasures and desires of life will no longer hold our attention, rather seeking first the kingdom of God and its righteousness will be our daily pursuit. Personally, I know that I am work in progress in the Lord's hands because the things that used to be a priority in my life are daily going backstage. This should be our destiny as Christians. That is, becoming the perfect bride of Christ, spotless, blameless, loving, kind, strong, and transformed into his likeness. Therefore, what will the resurrection power of Christ guarantee? 1. We are guaranteed of having God as our Father and being recognized by heaven as children of God. 2. We receive authority over the devil and all his works. 3. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do the impossible and the improbable, such as A. Drinking deadly poison and not being harmed. B. Laying our hands on the sick and they, and they recover. C. Casting out devils. Then 4. We receive boldness to be witnesses of God's kingdom by sharing his love, loving message of salvation to the world. 5. We are guaranteed of Jesus' return and our resurrection at the end of the age. E. In conclusion, the resurrection of Christ from the dead is the central message of Christianity. This is because it is the anchor of every hope we have now and ultimately the anchor of hope, of hope for all mankind. We can only have access to the power which raised Jesus from the dead if there was indeed a resurrection. Every promise for the future is predicated upon Jesus' return. But if he had not been raised from the dead in the first place, all promises of his rulership in his kingdom would be meaningless. Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 13 to 14 and verses 18 to 19 says, But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Then also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men. We, we are of all men the most pitiable. However, thanks be to God that the resurrection of Jesus from the dead is a reality and therefore we are guaranteed of being re resurrected at the end of the age. I pray that the power of resurrection fills our lives and our homes in Jesus' mighty name. I also pray that during this challenging season of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Lord Jesus will keep us all safe, but we must continue to work out our salvation and stay saved. May God help each and every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And all the people said, Amen. The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. I believe you took all of that in and will continue to run our lives according to the will of God. I encourage you to have fun with the family 
while remembering to keep the recommended social distancing measures and all other health instructions. Having said that, I wish you a very happy Easter. God bless you.